So the mark. All right, good evening to everyone and grateful that everyone has uh, began coming online and we pray that you will certainly uh, uh, invite someone else to be uh, with us on tonight if you invite a member church to be a part of this study tonight. It may be a blessing to them and a real blessing to their family. We pray uh, tonight that we certainly all would be blessed by God uh, just by reading and hearing the word of God. I tell you over and over again, it's a blessing to hear it. It's a blessing to read it. And the Revelation writer says all definitely is a blessing to do uh, the word of God. So tonight we will continue our discussion and study that we've been in this summer breeze that dealing with the uh, book of Psalms. And tonight our, our study will come to us from Psalms number 13, the 13th number of Psalms. Uh, there are six verses there that we want to uh, certainly um, be encouraged by these six verses on tonight. Now, we want to certainly pray for uh, Shelby Rose and his family tonight, um, passing his daughter, Pray for us. Brenda uh, Springfield. Uh, praying for Corey Young. And praying for Thomas Tima uh, tonight as we uh, go to God in prayer. Um, and also for the uh, Foster family as well. Uh, that God will certainly bless and, and he will definitely keep them. Uh, let us bow here. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall on your people here tonight. We pray, God, that your word would illuminate our minds, and we pray, God, that our, our lives will be elevated uh, by the hearing the word of God. Thank you for every person that is here uh, listening and into this uh, a, a celebration of this study tonight, and I pray, God, for those names that I have been called tonight, that you would certainly bless 
uh, each one of those uh, those members, uh, those loved ones that we are praying for on tonight. We thank you right now. In the marvelous name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Psalms number 13. I shall read uh, all six verses because I think that we would definitely cover the six verses here tonight. The psalm, psalm it says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy uh, triumph over me? Uh, the psalmist says in verse 3 of Psalms 13, he said, look on me and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep, I'll sleep in death. My enemy will say I will have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But the psalmist said, But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing, yes, to the Lord, for he said he has been good to me. <laughs> Psalms, Psalms 13. As we begin this study tonight, I want to uh, preface this by saying I, I really thank God uh, for my upbringing. I, I thank God for my uh, a training uh, that I received from uh, the Union Valley Baptist Church in the south side of Memphis, Tennessee, uh, 1051 East Macklemore, 3106. Well, Reverend Dr. H. O'Neill and Jr. Uh, is the pastor. I learned some things um, about God while I was there uh, growing up as a young person. I learned that God was a, a loving God. I learned that God was uh, omnipresent. I learned that God was omniscient. I learned things there that he was also uh, omnipotent. I learned there that he was a sovereign God, uh, that, that he is a God of all grace and he's a God of mercy. I heard them say for years uh, in that church that he was a prayer hearing God. And not only was he a prayer hearing God, uh, they say he was a prayer answering God. Uh, and, and they would say things uh, I should remember, uh, they would call him, they say he was a little of that. They say he was a bright and morning star. Y'all heard this. This is, this, is, this is how we were raised in church. They say he was a bridge over uh, troubled waters. They would even say he was a rock in a weary land. They, they, would t they taught us that he would be a shelter in the time of storm. That's what they taught us. These are things that uh, they taught us, the hymns of the church. I know the hymns of the church as me not, O gentle say, they taught us a uh, hold on to God's unchanging hand. These are the things that I would talk uh, as I was being trained, as I was growing up in church. And I, I appreciate uh, my upbringing. I appreciate my training. But tonight, the question that, uh, that, I, that is asked and the question that's in this Psalms is, have you ever uh, protested God? <laughs> have you ever... Uh, a, a protested God. Have you ever went to God and said, God, how long? Or uh, why me? Or why now? One of the things they did not teach, uh, uh, they did not really uh, go over uh, uh, with me in my training and my teaching in the church of Union Valley. They didn't really deal with the fact of, that, and they really told us that you have never questioned God. They said, you don't ever ask God a question. You, you said, accept what God's will is for your life. And maybe uh, tonight, uh, Psalms 13 comes from a, uh, a different uh, angle about who God is and what God is for us. And I tell you, tonight, uh, and whenever a person uh, uh, really protests God, what he's doing really, he's acknowledging God. He's really acknowledging uh, uh, the personhood uh, of what uh, who God really is. And when I read Psalms 13, I don't get what I was taught uh, in the church. I don't, I don't get uh, uh, that, that, that he's a prayer answering God. I don't, I don't get 
when I read Psalms 13, that, that God is, is a, that, that he hears my prayer, I don't get that. Well, what I get in Psalms 13 is what scholars call lament. I'm preaching like it's, 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 it's a person, uh, and the writer David is lamenting to God. He's complaining about his situation. And most laments are about what his enemy has done. <laughs> yes, that's uh, a lament. Really, is 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 what uh, uh, how we express deep sorrow. God help me to teach this in life. And it, 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 a lament is something that deals with a grief or or regret. And the Psalms, uh, the, the Psalms of lament, they're beautiful poems about hymns expressing human struggles. And tonight, brothers and sisters, the lament. Uh, that we are, uh, are looking at tonight. And when you look at the Laments uh, Psalms, they are comprised in uh, the, one of the, the largest categories of the Psalms, making up about one-third of the entire book of Psalms. So uh, the Laments Psalms are, are, are a very, very important psalm because uh, these Laments Psalms are individuals who are talking to God about the, what their enemy has done. They're sharing with God how they really feel, what's really on the inside of them. And these psalms are prayers that lay out troubling situations to the Lord. And make. And these are psalms that make a request for his help. And when you look at this psalm tonight, this psalm is saying, look, I can't go any longer. I cannot go any longer. Matter of fact, he said, Lord, I need you to handle this. That's what he's really telling God. He said, look, God, you need to handle this because I don't like what I'm dealing with. I, I don't really like what I'm dealing with. And, and, and also, I don't even like the folk that's coming after me for no cause. So when David writes these psalms, he's lamenting to God and he's sharing uh, with God how he really feels. And, 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 but, but, and the idea of it is, uh, he got some issues, and what when I have an issue, I'm supposed to go to God and and share with God what my issues are in my life. That's 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 the that's the journey that I'm supposed to be on. But y'all y'all stay with me tonight because but the question comes, and the problem is this: the problem is, what do you do when the issue is God? <laughs> oh my God! Tonight, what what do you do? That's and when, when the issue is God, God is my problem. Now, if it was in the community, I could deal with that. If it was, if it was really down the street and I had to, uh, or someone down the street was getting on my nerve, then I could deal with that. Uh, and, and, and it seems like the psalmist is tripping here because, because the question that we have to answer tonight is, what is the, do you do, when the issue is God. <laughs> can y'all hear me right now? And I need you to stay with me. I don't want your spiritual uh, uh, sensitivity to, to make you lead the class tonight when I ask you that question because uh, it, the idea of it is what, what do you do when, when God is the issue? How do I deal with, with God? When I, how do I, I, I fight back and argue with God? And, and tonight, you might not like me at the end of this lesson, but I'm telling you, we got to teach it according to what the word is here. And, and look at this Psalm 13. If you break it up into categories and break it up into outline, uh, verse 1 and 2 is David is on his face. He's on his face. He's really laying prostrate, like flat on the ground. And he's dealing with the trials. He's dealing with the depth and the length uh, of his of this burden that is on his life right now. So, so the first part is verse one and two. David is on his face, but the second thing is is David is now in verse three and four. David is on his knees. He, he's he's right on his knees. He's taking his burdens to the Lord. And he's leaving his burdens there. He's telling God to look, take notice of me. Look at me. And, and then only he's doing that. But the third thing is that as we move into this transition, David is on his feet in verse 5 and 6. He's rejoicing and singing unto God. I tell you tonight, 
as, as, as we look at this tonight, we must notice and, and accept that, that David does feel abandoned by God. That, that David feels as though God is nowhere to be found. That David is, and, and, and sometimes we, we leave people, uh, leave people uh, 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 with the impression uh, that they will never feel this way when they become a disciple of Jesus Christ. And that's really not great teaching because there will be times when we feel as though uh, that, that God is, is, is distant and God is, is, has abandoned us. And we, and we wonder, where is God? Where is God in this situation? And what, what can we do when we feel abandoned by God? What do you do? Where, where do you go to when the problem is God? Oh my God! And the, because when you're arguing this, this text is you, 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 you're talking back to God. He said, "God, look, you should have responded by now. I know you heard me pray. I know you, I, you, you heard me communicate with you, and, and and you should have shown up by now. God, you should have healed by now. How do you handle God?" My God, I can handle some of the people that's here tonight on the study, but I want to know how can I handle God? What, what am I going to do with God? And some, and when you look at Psalms 13, there's no hallelujah in it. There, there's no, no thanksgiving in Psalms 13. None, none at all. You don't find that anywhere in the psalm. But but there is, but he adds, he comes to us in the first verse, and there are two words in the first verse is very classic because look at the verse two words are classic and and he said how long that's what he said lord how long how long lord, lord how how long you, you're not doing anything you're not doing anything about my situation how long uh, do i have to go on dealing with this situation and, and the first thing i need you to put down is that at what i call an expression of genuine indignation the, the expression of Genuine indignation that, that David says, look, he, he said, I am having a problem with God. Lord, what he says, how long, how long are you, will you forget me forever? Look what he says, how, how, how long uh, do I have to go through this pain and this agony and this suffering and these that being, being rejected by men? How long will I have to do this? And I'll tell you, and brothers and sisters, you, and I hope you don't turn me off and be, and tune me out tonight and, and try to, to come up with the thing that you're so spiritual and you're so, uh, so, so close to God that you don't have these moments in your life. When we get through with this tonight, I think I might bring you to reality to know every one of us in this study tonight comes to a place in our life when we ask God, how long will I have to stay in this trial that I'm in right now? And I tell you, if, 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 if I could have, if it was my boss, I could deal with it. I could go to my boss and, 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 and challenge or study. I mean, talk to him about my situation or if it was my enemy, I can go and, and, and deal with my enemy because, but, but I, I really would have a recourse. And I'm not talking about my enemy. I'm not talking about my boss. I'm talking about God. I'm talking about the one that said hi, that one that looked low, and I'm, I'm having a problem with God. Look at the text. I'm not making this up. It's right here. He said, how long will you forget me? Oh, Lord, whatever. He said, how long will you hide out your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? Look what he said. How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? David is given an expression of genuine indignation that he has something against God. And the first thing that we notice as we read this Psalms is the repetition of the statement, how long? Y all, y all, I know y'all hang with me now. Look, look, he, he, he matter of fact, David asked God, how long? How long, God, uh, will, will you forget? How long will you hide your face from me? How long do I have to keep wrestling with the faults and the sorrows and the enemies triumphing over me? How long would it be? And these are, you got to understand that, my brothers, these are not words of a novice. 
This is not somebody that just come to Sunday, just come to church every now and then. This is this is a person that that stay in tune with God and communicates with God on the daily basis. And he's coming to God saying, Lord, how long have I have to do with this? Go through this situation uh, that that is seemingly that you have abandoned me. Seem like God, you are nowhere to be found. And if y'all are honest tonight, every one of us have lived long enough to have come to this place when you had to maybe or should have asked God, how long? How long do I have to take this? Because, because and I know always, uh, always feel uh, your presence. You know, good church folk always say, well, I'm always feeling his presence. Well, sometimes you ain't always feeling God. And David says this four times. David cries out to the Lord and he tells the Lord, how long? I tell you, the length of the test uh, that began to weary David let me tell you this tonight. Remember this, if you don't remember anything else tonight, that God not only designs the depth of your trial, but God also designs the length of it. Oh my God. He knows how long it's going to be. Anybody knows how long. I'm telling you tonight, God knows how long it's going to be. So, so not only uh, David is saying how long, how long, not how just how deep it is, how long this is going to be. And, and even when you study it later on, you can study the book of Habakkuk. And when, the, when you open the book of Habakkuk right away, you get a complaint by the prophet saying, Lord, how long? How, how long do we have to go uh, uh, through these situations in life and this world we're in and seeing all of these these things that are happening in this world, Lord, how long? And I tell you tonight, the length of David's uh, of suffering has been so long that David asks if God is going to forget him forever. Now, this has been going on so long, God, I'm on, I want to know, are you going to forget me forever? And we have been in such times of despair that when it's difficult to remember when better times exist in our life. Have, can, have y'all ever been there tonight? When, when, when seemingly uh, you've been in despair so long that you can't hardly remember when the better times existed. This is what David is because David is feeling uh, the feelings of loss. He's feeling abandoned. And his abandonment is so great that, that one is unable to see when the end's going to come. Peace tonight. And very rarely, very rarely are we able to see when the end would come. And let us really tonight see the agony. Let us feel the agony that David is in when he cries out, will you forget me forever? And what I call not only the expression of his indignation of God, but, but David is also having an extended dejection. He's feeling that God has dejected him and, and it appears like God's blessings has, has vanished away from him. How long would you, then he's asked the question, how long would you hide your face from me? How long would you hide your face? That means extended separation. Not only do I feel extended dejection from God, I'm feeling extended separation. Don't give me about 15 more minutes. I'm going to wrap this up tonight. Extended dejection, and I'm feeling extended separation. And, and it's what is called in, 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 uh, 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 an expression of idiomatic expression, which speaks of uh, about the blessings of God in the midst of despair. God seems so, so far from David. He seems so far removed that it seems that to David that God no longer is going to bless him. He said, I don't even feel his protection. I'm a priest tonight. I don't even feel this. I don't see, feel God's safety. I don't even feel the, uh, the refuge that he said he'll be a present help in a time of trouble. He said, it's been a long time. I haven't seen it. I, I, I've been on this path so long. I haven't felt God in a long time. David said, look, and, and I tell you, brothers and sisters, sometimes the length of our troubles seems so long that we don't feel God's presence. I tell you, he said, well, how long are you going to keep hiding your face from me? To, to be facing someone shows love. To be facing someone shows favor. But the Hebrew teaching that this is why hiding the face indicates a turn back. It implies rejection. And what David is saying here tonight uh, and teaching us tonight, he said, I don't feel like God is facing me. 
He said, I don't feel like that, 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 uh, that God is in front of me. He said, how long are you going to hide your face? He, David, it seemed like to him that God has turned his back. And all I feel is rejection. And I wish there were some real people on this study tonight can see and feel David's question because David said, where is God? Where is God? Why is God hiding his face? Why, why has God turned his back on me? I'm a good Christian. I, I go to church. I pay my money in church. I, I, I pray every day. I read the word of God every day. And it seemed like I can't find God anywhere. God, I can't find him. I don't see where he is, but I'll tell you, look at the text. So, it, so he really has extended separation. It seems like he's just separated from God. It seems like he's just dejected from God. That God has, has really literally a rejected God, rejected David. And he just said, Lord, how long do I have to deal with this? Look what he said, because no one is extended a separation, no one is in an extended uh, dejection, but he's also in an extended uh, agitation. Because look, David is in the text saying that he's becoming agitated with God. And I, I'm just, as a matter of fact, uh, his mind starts playing tricks on him. And his mind starts tra playing tricks. You suppose, you don't, you, don't, you don't have to say amen tonight. You don't have to say amen tonight. But I know you've been there when, when you didn't really want to come to church. And you, 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 because you got mad at God, because God has not come through when you wanted to. And I know you ain't going to do no waving right now on this because you don't want to let the people know online that sometime I've been in such a, such a funk that I didn't want to want to come to church because I was really mad at the God. And I didn't want God to know that I was angry at him. And I didn't want to let my pew member know that I was really mad at God. I wasn't mad at them. I was really mad at God because of God has allowed me to be in this situation when I didn't have to be. You suppose have uh, suppose I have an answer. Matter of fact, you're so mad because you said I'm you supposed to have answered by now. God, you should have answered me by now. And, and man, you you mad at God uh, and you start saying, Lord, you took my sister. You, you took my sister away, and you left an unsaved person. A person don't know anything about God, but you took something that was close to me, and now I'm mad at God. I want y'all y'all gonna feel me tonight. You took my job. You allowed me to lose my job, and you think I'm not mad at you? I got a problem with God. I'm I'm wrestling with this God. I'm mad as as I can be. <laughs> y'all y'all calm down, calm me down. I'm mad as I can. be. Be and I'm mad at God, and I want to know tonight, Marina, how can I deal with God? What can God, what am I going to deal with God when I'm angry at Him? I'm angry at God. I tell you, David is wrestling with the flood of emotions, and his emotion is taking the best of him, and David is wrestling with his thoughts, and he's wrestling with the sorrows of his day because the idea of it, he said, He's my enemies giving me problems. My, my enemies are, are, are giving me difficult situations in life. How long? He's a Lord. How long are you going to let my enemies be exalted over me? God, how, you, how long are you going to keep letting my enemies? I, I've, been, I've been going through this sickness uh, all year long. I've been going through this pain all year long. So tonight, I'm asking you, Lord, how long? When, when is the end? Where is the end? Because anybody knows, you know. And I'm talking to you, and I'm talking up to you tonight because David Ask the Lord, how long will his enemies triumph over him? And tonight we can feel that that just as we, when we think we're about to get off, uh, get up off the ground, the enemy comes along and pulls us back down. He said, Lord, how long am I going to keep dealing with this? Because the idea of it is, you should have by now have stopped all these things that is coming against my life. You, you, you were supposed to answer me a long time ago and you, because you told me if I trust you, if, if, that, if, if my, the old saints in my church say he was a prayer answering God, look, I've been praying. <laughs> this ain't like this. Uh, this ain't my first prayer. This ain't, this not the first time I've been talking to you and, and you told me if I get on the right path, you'll supply all my needs. When? When are you going to do it? How long am I going to keep having to go through this situation in my life? Lord, how long? He said, Lorraine, you're taking a long time on verse 1 and 2. The reason why I'm taking so long on verse 1 and 2 because I want y'all to get real tonight. I want y'all to become an authentic Christian for the first time because there are times in your life when you, you're not feeling Christine or Christian. 
Oh my God, no, don't, don't play. That, don't play with me tonight. Don't, don't, don't sit here on this line and say, Lord, I'm always feeling holy. I'm always shouting at church because you, by now you're telling God, God, you should have answered my prayer by now. I should be saying amen. I should have been shouting a long time ago. And, and now, I'm, but I'm still in this situation. Lord, how long? How long is it going to be? Well, I'm going to how, how I deal with it. But look what David did. Look what David does. Look what it there does in verse, verse 3 and 4. He says, Lord, uh, uh, look on me. Oh, my God. He said, look on me and answer, oh, Lord, my God. He says, give light to my eyes or I keep sleep in my death. Look, look what he says. He says look, look what look, he says. Lord, he said, look on me. The first thing David does when he, when he gives his lament and he's Arguing with God, he comes to God and asks God for a request. And whenever you have an lament and you have an argument with God explaining your situation, you also should immediately communicate with God. Look what he says. The first thing every person must do is pray. <laughs> Look at the words he says. Look on me. David is literally asking God to turn his face, see what's happening, and give me some consideration. That's what he's saying. He said, Lord, look at me, and not only look at me, give me some consideration. Uh, because and you, when you look at this, this is what he's doing. He said, hey, 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 I'm over here. That's what he said. Hey, 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 dog, you, you don't see me. I'm over here. Can, don't you know what I'm over, I'm, what I'm doing over here? Hey, 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 God. Hey, look at me. I need you to look at me. I am over here. Instead of throwing in the towel, giving up and turning to God, you need to tell God, consider. Oh my God, consider me. Listen to what I'm saying, God. Look my way. Have y'all ever had to tell God, look at me? <laughs> look at me, God, because look, look, brothers and sisters, David only asks God to look at him, but he tells God to give him consideration. Teach Moraine. He said, give him consideration. I'm over here. I'm at 6263 Alabama. Have you forgot my address? Don't you know how I'm feeling? But you know, sometimes, listen, listen to me. Listen, sometimes, brothers and sisters, we do pray. But David asked God, the know that do I pray, give me an answer. Answer me. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Lord, answer me. And sometimes we wonder. We wonder why we have not received answers to our prayers. Y'all follow me now. We wonder why God haven't answered our prayers. We have many things to consider that scripture tells us uh, concerning unanswered prayer. You know what scripture teaches about unanswered prayer? It says we, uh, we ask not according to the will of God. And then scripture says, but there's another thing that we must ask ourselves. Have we asked God to answer? Now, do y'all hear what I'm saying? I know you pray, but did you ask God to answer? David said, consider me. I'm not just saying, look at me. Hey, I need you to answer me. Oh my God, you some right. You got to be losing your mind. Huh? Every time I pray, ask him to answer me. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. We may respond. That we would not have asked if we, and I know none of your response. You said, I would never, I would have never called on him if I didn't want to answer. Well, but that's not necessarily true. Because sometimes prayer is used to appease your conscience. <laughs> sometimes prayer is just to tell others that we pray. <laughs> sometimes prayer is just to justify, uh, uh, uh justify in our minds that we can take matters out of our uh, into our own hands. But prayer is not simply asking God for something, but asking God to answer my request. I'm talking to Dexter Marina this morning. I mean, tonight, I'm not just talking to y'all. I'm talking to me. Because you know, sometimes it's not just simply asking God to, for something. It's about asking God to answer my request according to his will. Because this means that we have a heart that is truly ready to accept any answer from God. Can I, can I just slow that down? My God, I done got happy here now. Can, because look, look, you got to understand, when you start asking God to answer you, then you have to be ready for what an answer that he gives. Oh, my God, Lorraine. Because how often, uh, how often, Rick, we come to God, how often we only accept God's answer to prayers if the answers match what we want. Oh, 
my God. That's, that's, no, when you go to asking God for prayer, you want to do it because you want to make sure what you're asking him and the answer is going to match what you want. But to truly want an answer from God means that we got to be ready to accept no. Ooh, my God, yeah, yeah, are y'all here with me tonight? Ain't no waving going on tonight. I understand. I ain't, I ain't mad at you because you got to. If you're going to look for the answer from God, you got to understand. Sometimes the answer is not going to match what you want, but you got to be willing to receive the answer, even if He says no. No, no, no. But David said, Lord, look what he said. Look on me. Hey, hey, God, I'm over here. And look what he says. He said, I need you to answer me. And then look what else he said. He said, Lord, I need you to give light. Give me light to my eyes or I'm going to sleep the sleep of death. He said, Lord, I need you to open up my eyes or I won't be able to sleep. I'll be sleeping the sleep of death. And look what he says is David literally I'm trying to help y'all get, get, get done early. He, David is literally asking God to turn his face and see what has happened and giving him serious consideration. Moraine, 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 look, because look, he said, Lord, I need you to open up my eyes because the Hebrew gives a really clear understanding of this because the word really means to be enlightened. It's translated to be, he said, give light to my eyes, enlighten me. Verse 3, because he said, in other words, it really also literally means the cause to shine. It means the cause to shine. God, look at me. And then he said, I need you to lighten up my way and light my eyes so I can be able to see. You know, for years, uh, there's a great benediction in, in, the, in the scriptures in Numbers chapter uh, 6, verse 24 and through 26. And it says this, he said, the Lord bless you and keep you. He said, may the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance on you. And he said, and give you peace. My God, in here tonight. Look, look, every now and then, I need, I need to tell God, Lord, shine in my direction. In other words, Lord, I want you to, your, 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 his face, especially his eyes, look, I want, I want, it has become hard and flat and my life has become dull and dim and darkness and that I feel like I'm defeated and that I, heard, I haven't heard from God in a long time. I need him to brighten up my way. I need some brightness in my life. And whenever God brings brightness, he brings light. He also lifts us. Yeah, he he lifts up. So he, he 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 lifts us up, and he and understand when I when I came from the Union Valley Baptist Church, used to be a lady there by the name of Mary Broom. Mary Broom would sing this song, "Shine on Me," <laughs> and they said, "Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me." And every now and then, I tell you, I need God to give me some light. Brighten up my corner, brighten up my life, and give no room for my enemies. Mm -hmm. Give no room for my enemies. Look what David says. Look, he said, Lord, I need you to lighten up. I need you to brighten up my life. Shine in my direction. Because right now, all I see is darkness. All I see is pain. All I see is anguish. And I need God to handle this. Look, you, you got depressed children. You, you, you may be a grandmother tonight that, that's, that, that you want to God. This stuff is heavy on me. I need you to handle this situation. Shine on me. Have y'all ever had God just needed God to shine in your direction? That's all I'm saying. You needed him to look at you. And Lord, David only said, give, give me, brighten up my eyes. That's what he said. Lighten up my eyes, oh Lord, my God. Give light in my eyes and keep my enemies overcoming me. And he said, my enemies from rejoicing in, in God. In other words, what he does is, so I try to wrap this up to my dear, David has been, had been in, in having an indignation against God. He has, he has talked against about God and he literally has done the right thing because I'm telling you, you all are sitting here tonight, don't want to be honest with me and say, look, I've got mad at God. And whenever you protest God, I told you earlier, when you protest God, that means you're acknowledging God. You're acknowledging who and what God is in your life. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, this is the dog world we in. 
This is a dark world. You, you're here. You're, you're providing for someone. You're taking care of someone. And you want to say, well, how long do I have to do it? How, how long am I going to go through this? My daughter's been depressed for, for a few years, God. How long? How long? It, it would be okay if it were just one day. It would be okay if it were just three weeks. But this has been going on for a year and year after year. And I want to know how long. Let's, let's wrap this up tonight because look at verse 5 and 6. But he said, what? Oh, my God. I trust in you. Look what he said. Really, uh, really, the tone of the text changes. The tone of the text is changing from what David has been saying up to this point. And what is what I call, you can put down, it's, a, it's an exposure of Godward. <laughs> it's an exposure of God. He Now he did, he's been complaining and and, and, and talking about God and how God has not been there for him. But now David wraps up and says, look, God, he exposes God and says, Lord, he said, Lord, Lord, look what he says in verse 5. But no matter what's going on, he said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I don't care what I have been going through. He's, I'm going to trust you. I done called hell every day for the last six months, but I'm going to trust you. Listen here, I was mad. Five minutes ago. <laughs> I was mad as I could be five minutes ago. Matter of fact, and, and, and matter of fact, in verse one and two, I was in, 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 I had a righteous indignation. I was upset with you because it's been going on too long, three weeks and six months and a year, and I ain't found a job yet. I know I'm a good person. I, I deserve to get more than this. I haven't done anybody wrong, and God, you sitting up there and not doing anything, but when you expose God and he bring exposure to your life, you'll come back to verse instead of know that he's been on this David been on his face I told you he'd been on his face and prostrate in front of God but now he's he's standing on his feet and he said Lord I'm telling you right now tonight I trust you I trust you but but I trust you first time first time I've been is this the first time you've been frustrated? Y'all don't play with me tonight. This isn't the first time you've been upset. It ain't the first time you've been frustrated. But you got to trust him when you can't trace him. <laughs> you got to trust him when you can't track him down. Oh, yeah, you got to trust him no matter what's going on. He's, I don't know where you at. You ain't said nothing all in all. Listen to me tonight, brothers and sisters. Look, in six verses that we've gone over tonight, God hadn't said not one word. Y'all check it out. You ain't got to take my word. You read these six verses. And these six verses, God, David says right here, he right in the text, God never said a word. <laughs> I done let my hair down. I done screamed. I done hollered. And God haven't said a word. But David said, I don't care if he don't say one word. He said, I still trust him. <laughs> He's a God, y'all know, if you don't talk back to me, I'm still going to trust you. And the reason why I tell you right now, Rick, the reason I'm going to trust him because I got some history with him. <laughs> and when you got history with God, no matter what you go through in life, you know if he brought you through 10 years ago, he's going to come in right on time. He may not come when you want him, but he'll show up right on time. Now, I'll tell you, he's never heard it. <laughs> but he ain't never late. Good God, Moraine, 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 help me here tonight because I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, I've got too much history with God to leave him now. <laughs> I know stuff ain't good, but I've been with him too long to let him go now. I'm going to trust him in spite of what he haven't said a word. He haven't even said he's going to come see me in six verses, but i got some history. I won't know tonight. Anybody got history with God? <laughs> Anybody here got some history with God that know God has made a way for you and tonight? Anybody got history with God that know he's a way maker? I mean, then, then you say, Lord, if, he, if, if he's a way maker, when are you going to make a way? My, when are you going to send a way, um, make a way for me? I'm telling you, when you got history with God, you get to verse 5 and 6, you start rejoicing. And then he says in the sixth verse, the reason why I got history with God, because he said, God's been good to me. <laughs> David had changed his tone. He was, he was upset, mad as, as he could be with God, but he get to the end of this verse and end of this, this psalm, he said, God's been good to me. <laughs> and I'm listening. I know that somebody may tune into this, uh, this, this, this situation because I'm telling you, God has been good to me. 
I ain't been all that good to him, but he sure not been good to me. <laughs> I ain't making this up. It's right here in the verse. He said, for he has been good. He said, I'm going to sing his praises. I'm going to holler out for him because he's been good to me. I ain't got a job, but I'm going to tell, trust him. I don't have money in the bank, but I'm going to trust him. Friends have left me alone, but I'm going to still trust him. Family don't know where they are, but I'm going to still trust him. I don't know how many friends. Like I don't have a one or two, but I'm going to trust him because I do know he always come through right on time. Good evening, y'all. That's all I came to tell you, that God got a good character. I know he cares about me, and I know he's consistent. <laughs> well, I'm about to jump out this chair. Look, I know he got good character. I know he cares, and I know he's consistent. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is, do I have five folk in here know he got good character? <laughs> do I have five folk in here listening to me tonight know he cares about you? And do you do it? Is it five folk know that God is consistent because God has been good? Six verses, he ain't said a word, but he's still been good. And I'm telling you right now, as I close my mouth, you don't never say another word to me. I'm still going to trust you. I, I don't have no other choice. I, I don't have nobody else to talk to greater than God. Because even when things ain't going like I want it, he's still God. Why do you think God, why do you think David is talking to him? He had nowhere else to go. <laughs> he had nowhere else to go. God, because God will take care of you. Good, good, good evening, saints. I'm so glad y'all on tonight. I just pray that you will share this with somebody. Because I know one thing, I couldn't wait to get here tonight. Because this was a lesson that was for me more than it is for you all. I'm telling you, matter of fact, I had to uh, today I, I just called a group of guys in and told them to read this Psalms and tell me what they feel. And, and I, I had men in my office literally tears falling down their eyes because they, they say, yes, I'm, he said they, they were crying, literally crying because they, uh, I, I, I explained to them what I'm somewhat explaining to you all that sometimes you can be on the path and don't sound like God, nowhere to be found. They said, look, look, he's, I've been one guy, so I've been here 10 years. I've been here 15 years. And he said, I don't know how long I can take it. Ooh, he said, I don't know how much I can take it. And where well, is God? He said, I pray. I read my Bible. I made a mistake. I acknowledge my mistakes. But I said, Lord, how long? I said, look, man, you ain't the only one. There's some folk I'm going to talk to tonight. Ain't going to be as honest as you all are because they all they got all this sanctified stuff in their head, but it ain't in their heart. Because when you get it in your heart, you know there's some limits that you got. That you got some weaknesses. And I pray tonight that these guys walked out of my office with tears. I'm talking about 50-year-old men. 40-year-old men, because they looked at this text, and I said, I don't want y'all to read it from your head. I want you to read it from your heart. And when you read it from your heart, it hits you a different way. And I'm telling you, there's some people listening to me tonight is hung in verse 1 and 2. They still got a problem with God. But then, you got it every now and then, ways of Lord. Do you see me? <laughs> do you see me? Are you looking? Well, if you're looking, look my way and help me get out of this situation. I, I'll tell you right now, it ain't no hallelujah in this text. It ain't no thank God in this text. Not in not one of these verses. But I dare y'all to say hallelujah right. As a matter of fact, everybody listening to me ought to be putting in hallelujah in now. Hallelujah, anyhow. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, every now and then, you got to ask the question, Lord, do you see me? I didn't learn this at 1051 as Macklemore. But I tell you, life will bring you here. But what they taught me, bless my life. Yeah, what, what they taught me, bless my life. But they didn't tell me there were going to be times in my life that I'm going to get mad at God. Every time, you're going to get mad at God. Whew. At times, I'm going to fight with God. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be, I'm mad at him. I'm mad. Because he, he, he should have answered me by now. He could have responded to me by now. Hallelujah. I give God praise in this place tonight. 
I, I'm not trying to make this as short as I can because I need y'all to share this with someone. I don't want nobody to have to listen to a tape for a long time. They get bored. But I'm going to tell them hallelujah anyhow. This is just a praise period. As a matter of fact, somebody even here tonight said, oh, I, I want to praise. I should have praised you already. But you, you've been distant from me. <laughs> you, you, you've abandoned me. I don't feel like saying hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, walk through it. Walk through it and do it anyway. <laughs> do it anyway. And then tell God, like Jonathan McReynolds say, make room for me. Make room for me. Make room, because here I am. Here I am. And I'm one thing I ain't gonna never be. I ain't gonna never be a person that's not real to my name. And I don't never be a preacher that say I don't have these kind of issues, because I'm telling you. <laughs> I got this kind of stuff. And I'm telling you right now, I'm so glad that Psalm 13 is in the Bible. And I'm glad y'all's spiritual sensitivity didn't turn me off tonight. Whew, my God. Hallelujah now. I will. I'm going to make room for you in my life tonight. Praise his name. Have y'all ever had God didn't say a word? Oh, my God. Didn't say a word. You can bless somebody tonight. Bless your family member tonight. Bless your family member here tonight. This ain't no sweet sermon. This, this stuff, this is real stuff. This is tough. This, this, this grown-up talk. <laughs> no, this, this grown-up conversation. Mm-mm. That's why people don't want to be in church, because people in the church don't, don't tell the truth. Yeah, all we got is when we come to church, Lord's been good, praise the Lord, stand up three times, turn around, shake your hand, and all. Some days, ain't, it, that ain't like that. <laughs> I don't feel like shaking nobody's hand. I don't feel like even praising God. I'm here because my mama told my shit to be here. This grown folk talk. Now, in fact, I've seen some of y'all come to church, cross your leg, uh, and, and mad as mad as you can be. <laughs> Don't want to be that? Because God and yet God ain't answered nothing for you. My God. But you hang on in there. And you're right up there. Please share it tonight with somebody. Let somebody know you're safe. <laughs> Let some of your friends know you listen to Bible class on Wednesday night. Share it. Share it. Let them know. Make room. My attitude, he can move it over. Move that over. Whatever it is, just move it out of the way. <laughs> Amen to my God of my. Man, this this is Psalm 13 has been it's, it's, it's something. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. I really feel like preaching now. Because mm. I want to holler in there. I know some folk mad at God. You ain't gonna let your pit make no, you ain't gonna let them know, but just give God a wave in hand. You, you ain't gonna let nobody know you're mad at him. You've been through this too long. But you ought to tell, tell the enemy you're alive. I got history with God. <laughs> and he's gonna come through right on time. God bless y'all tonight. May God keep you. I'll keep y'all on here too long already. God bless you. Pray for me. Pray for my strength in the Lord. Pray that I can go get through this uh, this virus season uh, with teaching and preaching the word of God. It's difficult. It's a challenge on me. But pray that God will get us through. I agree with you, Joe. That make me want to holler <laughs> and throw up both my hands. <laughs> Hallelujah tonight. Mm -hmm. Move it over. See y'all Friday. We got some for you Friday. Amen.